Hi, this is Bob Sorrentino from Italian Genealogy, and I'm here today with my cousin Paul, who knows a lot about the family that I was too young to know about. So thanks, Paul. Thanks for being with me today. My pleasure, kiddo. So the first thing I wanted to ask you is, did Nanny or Grandpa ever talk to you about their parents or their grandparents? No, the only thing that I can remember that my grandfather or our grandfather said was that he had a sister that was a nun in Italy. But other than that, I, I, not that I don't recall, but I know for sure that they never really talked about any family or brothers or sisters or anything. I know grandma had some relatives here, some cousins or something. And I think that was the family that lived in Jersey the Delatories, I think I, I, we might have mentioned them in the past somewhere. Yeah, and that, that really surprises me, although I know a lot of people say the same thing. They say that their you know, grandparents, or in some cases, because they're younger than us, their great-grandparents, never really talk that much about, about the family or about the trip. Um, and, you know, some people say they think because they left that life behind, you know, when they came to America and that was the past. Right. There was something that they didn't want to reconnect with or anything because well, I'm re repeating myself, but I never ever remember any, especially with nanny and grandpa talking about anything, you know, in the past. Right. Right. And, um, you know, talking about the relatives that we know, um, the Delatore and um, the Pergamos, uh, Thomas Pergamo, was married to Nanny's aunt, Maria Piramalo. If you remember, we had that conversation, and that's where, that's where Aunt Beatrice comes from, which was something that I was really surprised to hear about. But you actually visited them in Jersey, uh, the Delatores. And yeah, when we, when we were kids, yes. And then there was another family, and I don't know what the connection was, but I know it was with Nanny, was the DeSena family, Frank DeSena. And he had a, he ran a nursery uh, in Madison, New Jersey. And I remember going there, probably I was 12 or 13 years old. We went to a daughter's wedding there. And that's when I met them and knew that there was a connection with Nanny. Yeah, now, do you know, because we know that my father was the only one born in New Jersey, do you know how they wound up in Scotch Plains? I know, I really don't, because I, I know when they came to New York, they lived on East 14th Street, because my, when they came here, my mom was five years old, and they lived in an apartment on East 14th Street, and that's where she had the incident where she fell out the five-story window. Now, why they ended up in Jersey, I have no idea. I know Grandpa didn't have any kind of a business that would have warranted to go to Jersey. So, Yeah, and, and um, interesting thing, I uh, found, uh, I think it was, um, I think it was around Memorial Day that the, the paper from... Uh, uh, Plainfield or Plainview, Plainfield, I think, New Jersey, which is roughly where Scotch Plains is. Um, the uh, newspapers.com gave you like three free days of searching. So I started searching that paper and I found some amazing things. Now, I had an article from that paper that I got from Linda um, that she had sent me about when Nanny's father uh, passed away. And I started looking for Sorrentino and I found some amazing things there. First thing that I found was that uh, grandpa's father, Achille, what, his obituary says that he was a Supreme Court justice in Naples when he died. Oh, really? Yes. Isn't that shocking? Uh, I'll have to send you that. I'll have to send you that article. Now, I knew that he was a lawyer um, because I saw the records of uh, somebody's birth 
uh, one of one of the Sorrentinos. So I knew that he was a lawyer, but I never had any idea that he was a Supreme Court. Uh, and his justice. name was Achilles. His name was Achilles, which made yeah. sense, right? Right. Was, like our, we had an uncle that was called Achilles, my my mother's brother. The other Bobby Sorrentino. But now when you mention that. There's a little bit of a connection because I remember Grandpa referring to Uncle Augie, that we used to call him, as a Philadelphia lawyer because he used to come up with all these solutions and stuff when in conversations. I don't remember what they were, but I remember this with Grandpa saying, oh, the Philadelphia lawyer is here again, you know. And, that's, and his, his son Bobby never mentioned that. Yeah, maybe he didn't. Who knows if he even knew? Maybe he didn't even know. Um, yeah, and I, I want to guess, I'm going to guess at the date, it was probably the late 20s, maybe 28, 29, something like that, maybe 1930, 32, you know, somewhere in that range, somewhere between the 28 and the, the, the 29. Um, Couple of the other things that I found in this these articles was um, my dad was dressed as a New Year's baby, and that was in the paper. Uh, yeah, uh, and um, they had that in there, and they had uh, I believe Aunt Julia's birthday party was in there, and uh, that your mom uh, threw the party for her. Really. But your dad, your dad was born in 23 or 20? 23. 23. 23, yeah. Yeah. So to be the New Year's baby, he had to be a year or two old. Yeah, I think it was 25 or 26, somewhere around that. He was he, he was just a baby. Uh, and then they had uh, another couple of little things where, um, and this is this was funny, where Aunt, uh, Aunt Julia motored to Brooklyn to vacation with her relatives. Motored? Must be, oh, I guess that's the car, right? <laughs> the one thing I can't find, and I don't know if you know, it appears that Nanny came by herself with the three kids, and Grandpa was already here. He was already here. He was here, I think, five years before was he? she came off. Oh, really? I think it was about five years. Well, it couldn't have been no, five No, no, it could have been five. It couldn't have been because my mother was five years old when she came here. Unless when she was born, then he came over. I don't know. Unless he went back and forth, because I think Aunt Mary was maybe two, two with two, maybe two years old when they came. Yeah, she was young, and what I remember about Aunt Mary when they came over, this information comes from my mother, that when they went to Ellis Island, <clears throat> and they had to go to quarantine, Aunt Mary had a cold, or she was sick with some kind of a cold or something, and they actually kept her there for some limited amount of time and then she they were able to bring it to New York. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know Grandpa and I kind of knew Nanny a little bit. I mean, I just remember, you know, I remember going upstairs and she had the little TV, but she would speak mostly in Italian and to my father. So what I'm really curious about is what was Grandpa like and what was Nanny like? What were their personalities? Yeah. And Nanny, who spoke very little English, you know, but she understood the TV soap operas that enough that she would watch them every day. And, you know, I, I lived upstairs with her when I became a teenager because then, you know, my brother had his own room downstairs. I slept upstairs. But uh, nothing unusual, you know, that I can remember about her. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I knew she always wore black. That much I remember. <laughs> she, she, she always wore black, and she, and didn't she? She sealed off. Or not, I don't want to say maybe not sealed off is the wrong word, but um, I remember, and I don't know if I'm just remembering this because I was young and I thought something different, but I kind of remember that she didn't use the same room that her and grandpa used. That she no, used they used to room. sleep in separate bedrooms. Oh, they yeah. did? Yeah, and that was the same when they lived in Corona before we lived to Whitestone. No kidding. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And who knew? Who even thought of, gave any thought of why they slept in separate bedrooms? But I often thought because Grandpa was a, I mean, a, a smoker, that he probably smoked two packs a day, and that's why he ended up dying what he died from. Yeah, but him and if my you father. Went to, right, right. Him and my father. Oh, oh yeah, right. But if you went to my grandfather into my grandfather's bedroom when we lived in Corona, the top of the dresser, of course, he'd light the cigarette and put it on the edge. You'd see all the burn marks. There were hundreds mm -hmm. of burn marks right around the whole top of the dresser he had in his room. And I'll never forget that. You know, could that have been the reason why they didn't sleep in the same bedroom? Because grandma wasn't a smoker? I don't know. But she didn't smoke. But what I remember about grandma, because when we lived in Corona, my brother and I, who were like, you know, very young, slept in the same bedroom with her but and in separate beds. But before she would go to bed at night, she had snuff, Copenhagen snuff. Really? And she every, right? <laughs> and she'd take a little sniff every night. Right. Whoever thought, but now in fact I talk to my kids and my grandkids about it. Oh yeah, grandma was probably a junkie or something, you know. <laughs> She did. She did tell you that she that her cousin was the princess, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and she was. And we thought it was. We thought it was all BS, you know. <laughs> but now it proved that there was royalty in the family. Uh, that's well. That's funny. I I see now. I I often I thought it was. I thought she didn't sleep in that room because Grandpa died, and she didn't want to be in the room because he had passed away. No. They, not, not, since I we were kids, we were living in Corona. Probably wow, from the day cool. one when they moved into Corona, they both slept in separate bedrooms. You know. So back to Grandpa's personality. Um, out of, I mean, I didn't know Uncle Achille that well. I mean, obviously, you know, Aunt Mary and your mom and uh, Aunt Julia. Um, who? Who was the most like him? Which one of the children were the most like Grandpa or Grandma? Or, or like them? Yeah. You mean in similar personality? Personality, yeah. I don't know. Aunt Mary was really great. I mean, she had no children, but she loved her nieces and nephews, right? Yeah, yeah. Your dad, I, I can't compare him to Grandpa. And Uncle Argy, Uncle Achilles, I really didn't know that well. You know, he died young. I was a young kid. He passed away, I think, in 1949. I was 12 or 13 years old at the time. So oh, he he died he died before Grandpa. Yeah, he died. Oh, he I died. He died after. Well, I'm trying to think. Grandpa died in 1951. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I was a freshman. Right after I was born. School. Right after I was yeah, born. Right. He died. And when Uncle Augie died, I think Grandpa was already dead. Because I remember whoever came to the house to tell him that he had Uncle Achilles had died, I don't remember Grandpa being there. All I remember is Grandma getting hysterical, crying upstairs in the house in Whitestone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I say. I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't remember him at all. I, I, you know, um, I remember Aunt Clara a little bit. I was kind of, you know, I remember her a little bit. Um, but she, she was much, she was much taller than him, right? Oh yeah, yeah. She was. There's no height in the Sorrentino family. <laughs> you're right. You know, Aunt I mean, Mary. I, I, they used to. Her nickname was Tiny. I know. I know. Yeah. And the and the and the nun. Sister Alfonsina, I don't think, even think she was five foot. Really? I Stephanie uh, Lois's daughter sent a photo of her, and S Stephanie said she's only like five one, and the Sister Alfonsina looks like she's like four eight or something like that. Really? She's yeah. Really, really. I never really saw tiny. a picture of her though. But I'll, I'll send you that. Is, Lois's daughter had that picture. Now, where would she have gotten that picture from? She she went to Italy when she was about seven, seven, sixteen, seventeen. Must have been just before. Must have been just before 
Sister Alfonsina passed away um, because she's very, very old. And Stephanie has a photo with her. And then I have the photo of her when she must have first become a nun. You never saw that photo? No. no I'll, I never I'll have did. to send you that. Yeah. And I just found out recently that, um, um, and I don't know if it was in the letter that you, that you sent me that Aunt Julia had, um, but I just found out that she was a nun in Salerno. That's where she was. In Sicily. In, no, Salerno, just outside, just south of Naples. Oh, okay, all right, yeah. Yeah, that's where, that's where, that's where she was, um, that's where she was a nun, and I guess she must have been a nun for about 60 years. Well, I remember Nanny telling us about the nun, because, and I, I won't, it's, it was an Italian phrase, but I'll tell you in English, and Grandma Nanny was not that religious. But she held no. on to her religion, right? right? I don't ever remember Nanny going to church other than your father's wedding. No kidding. Yeah. And same with Grandpa, you know. But Nanny used to talk, no, Grandpa, I'm sorry, used to talk about his sister. But Nanny used to tell us that the order that she belonged to, of the nunnery that she was in, Every hour on the hour, when they would ring the bell in the convent or wherever it was, they would have to say a phrase in Italian, which translates to, another hour has passed in our lives. Really? pasado another hora in nuestra vida. Wow. And I, that, that stayed in my mind. I was telling my grandson that yesterday. You know, because we were going over some of these questions and stuff like that. Wow, that's weird. Now, I'm, I, not, I mean, not that I thought that they weren't religious or were religious or anything, but I'm, I'm, I'm surprised at that. It was something that never really dawned on us either. You know. Yeah. No. No. I. I. No. I. I get that. Um, that's something. And I would have thought with her upbringing you know, w with the nobility and all of that, that they would have been in church every 10 minutes. <laughs> the, only, the, only, the only time I remember Grandpa being in church when I got confirmed because he was my godfather and he had to go up on the altar and put his right hand on my shoulder. Uh, now, were you there when my, my, when, when my father was putting the Pepsi Cola into the baby nipple? Yes, at Aunt Julie's <laughs> apartment in East Elmhurst. I remember that. Bobby... You wouldn't believe when you when your father was doing and grandpa sitting back and saying how how proud he was of his son who could do these tricks and all of a sudden the friggin' nipple explodes and it's all over. I remember that. Uh, so that so that so that's when they they lived in East Elmhurst. I didn't even realize they lived in East Elmhurst. So that was before they they lived in St Albans, I guess. Yes, they moved to St Albans. I think in 19, the year I got married, I think 1960. But they lived, they actually, the apartment house they lived in in East Elmhurst was the apartment where the, uh, some, one of these, uh, when they had the Puerto Rican Liberty thing, whatever, and the guys were making bombs. Really? The guy, the guy that would made the bombs lived in that building because the, when the bomb exploded and wrecked half the building, I was working at the Daily News at the time. I remember going there, covering the story, and saying to myself, that's the same building that Aunt Julie lived in where the trolley car that ran up Junction Boulevard used to turn around. That was their terminal part down there. So I wanted to ask you about my godparents, who were two of the most wonderful people. I mean, I loved your mom. I loved your dad. Your mom was... My mother and father yeah, yeah. were your godparents? Yes, yes. When I, you got baptized? Yeah, that's why I used to go on vacation there in the summertime. I didn't need, I never knew that. I don't yeah. remember that. Yeah, yeah. They were they were my godparents and I had a great gig until Susan came around and ruined it all. Oh shit. Well, what do you expect? <laughs> yeah. There's always a spoiler in the crowd somewhere. <laughs> I always tell her that. I said I had a great gig and then you came along. Now your dad your dad was older when he came to America, right? He was 17 years old. 17? I he, thought he was 15, so he was 17. No, 17. Well, 
he could have been on it, but from my information, he came with a friend of his. They got came by some kind of a ship, and they landed in Canada. Him and his friend Patsy, who ended up owning two very famous restaurants. Yes, I remember. I remember going to the. Yep. Yeah, the Vesuvio restaurant. Yeah. Oh, so I didn't. So I didn't know that he came with him. Yeah, he came with him. I mean, they were too close until well, both of them passed away. Oh, but they wow. came to Canada. Then the two of them walked across the Rainbow Bridge into Niagara Falls. They were like they were illegal aliens, in a point that you know. I mean, my kids now talk about illegal aliens, illegal aliens. I said, you. Your great grandparents <laughs> was so shut up, right? <laughs> or your grandparents. You anyway, but then they came, and a friend of mine's son went on this ancestry a couple of years ago, and he was able to come up with my father's immigration papers somehow. Well, they probably weren't immigration because he came here illegally, but it had a, a thing, and he lived in Brooklyn with somebody for about five years. And then from there on in, he disappeared until he, you know, ended up marrying my mom. He came from Capri, right? Yes, yeah. Right, so did, had, did he talk about Capri? I mean, well, he, that, Capri is wait, beautiful. Right, but he was born in Capri, but they lived in in Italy in uh, Bagna di Luca, which is up on Milan. Oh, and okay. that's where that's where he was as a teenager and so on. So that's why the cousins that's why the cousins are up there because that's where they Yeah, are. right. Yeah, yeah. His mother uh, lived up there for years until she passed away and his two brothers lived in that area of, you know, up around Milan for many years. But in Capri his father which would have which would be my grandfather or my great one of them Great grandfather was actually a governor or a mayor in the city of Capri, and there's actually a building because one of my cousins were here. Oh yeah, he was the governor, right in Capri, and there's actually a building that still exists that's got like um, whatever you want to call it, the mosaic of his face on that building. No kidding. Yeah, and my when my two cousins were here which were the daughters of my father's two brothers. They gave, I have a picture somewhere that they gave me, but they tell me about that, you know. Oh, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to look because we, when we went to Italy 20 something years ago, we, we went to Capri. We took the boat across and I probably saw the thing and had no idea who it was. Yeah, that was it. Well, your father, your father uh, introduced me, I, how, how old was I? Five, six, seven? I don't know. To Demi Tass. Oh, Demi, yeah. <laughs> and, and and for those who don't know what Demi Tass is, it's espresso. And um, and wine with water. Little wine bit, with water, really? A little bit of wine with the water. You don't remember we used to be down the basement and have that, right? Well, when the, we were we were when I was a kid. We lived in Corona. I was right, seven or eight, nine years old. We moved out of there. I was 11, 10 years old. But at dinner time in Corona, Nanny and Grandpa obviously were at the table with us because we all lived in the one. But as children, as kids, Grandpa would give us that half a glass of wine with water in it. You know, now if I drank red wine, I'd be stewed out of my, you know. Well, now if you gave the kids a half a glass of wine with water, they'd send you to jail. <laughs> but but I remember that I remember that distinctly. You were in Corona when my mom and dad met, and my, I, you, um, I don't know if you know this. My my mom's father used to call my father Tuta Jacket. Oh 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 yeah, because he's the weirdo. <laughs> well, I remember when you when your dad met. Your mom, we were living in Corona, and obviously I don't know what was going on, but your dad didn't come home one night from really? his date with your uh-huh. mom. Yeah, uh-huh. and I re- <laughs> and I remember Nanny and Grandpa giving your father. You wouldn't believe the, the big scolding and yelling when he came back to the house 
on 97th Street. You know, and they're yelling at him in Italian, which I could just about understand. But I think they were accusing your mother and your father <laughs> of doing, you know. Well, maybe they were. I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, I, but, <laughs> I never heard you know. that story. Oh, well, he wasn't going to tell you that story, <laughs> you know. So, so, uh, so, did you ever find? The, did you ever get the story where he just way what happened? Or you don't know? Why? When your father and your mother didn't, your dad didn't come home. Yeah. That night? No, I never even asked. Your <laughs> father and I were very close because we worked together, and I have to credit give your dad all the credit of helping me get the job at the Daily News, you know, and so on. But. I would never even ask him about that. You know, I don't want to break up a friendly relationship. That's something I never heard that story. Um, but you, but you, but you did, you did uh, ask him about a photo that he missed one time, didn't you? Oh yeah, the plane crash. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, I'm sorry I used that word. Leave that out. But you know that story, yeah. right? What happened, right? And he had come to visit Nanny. I guess the day or day it happened or something. And I walked upstairs and he's sitting at the table with Nanny. And I said, oh, so you really effed up today, right? He picks up the phone book that was there, the yellow pages or whatever it was, you know. And he takes it and he threw the thing at me. You know, <laughs> I realized I, I guess they pissed him off or something. Yeah. yeah, he didn't. Well, I guess no photographer well, I was missing a shot, right? In those days, in those days, you, you missed the shot. You missed the shot. There was you know. oh yeah, right. There was no repeat, and there was no digital cameras, and you know. Um. I wanted to ask you about it, you know, because because you know, obviously, you and my dad both worked for the for the Daily News, uh, and I always post out about the. Um, I have a few of his photos of the. Uh, a, a few of the Italian guys who didn't quite make it uh, or, or go naturally. Oh yeah. Did you ever have any run-ins with our uh, Sicilian friends or those on the other side of the law? No, but your dad had a I knew he had a run-in with Joey Gallo, right? But uh, I never really got involved with these guys. Well, actually, well, yeah, later on with um, what's his name? Uh, Gotti. John Gotti, right? That uh, he when he was made. He was the made man, then the head of the yes, whatever right, the gang, yeah. right? And we were staking him out, me and the reporter at their house in Howard Beach, and we're sitting in the car, and his son and a friend parked behind us and start bumping our car. You know, he was looking <laughs> around, what's going on? Next thing I know, they pull up next to us, and they use a couple of nice, nasty words, and they said, if you don't get out of here. They're going to find you and your friend, meaning the reporter, in the swamps. So we sat there figuring, you know, but then the threat got a little more serious that I actually, on the radio, notified the office. I said, if you don't hear from me and uh, uh, what the hell was his name, Richard, uh, the reporter, and I forget. If you don't hear from us, come looking for us in the swamps on Howard Beach, right? <laughs> But that's probably the only time I remember that, you know, getting involved with any of those guys. Yeah, I, I remember my father with <clears throat> Joey Gallo. I mean, he does have the picture where the brother, where they were going to hang the brother. Um, but he used to take Joey Gallo's pictures all the time. And I remember him telling me one time that um, Joey Gallo was coming out of the court in Brooklyn, coming down the steps. and Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> He was always doing that, but my this one time my father's taking the picture and some guy kept pushing the camera out of his way. So my father kept looking at this guy and the guy kept pushing the camera and then he went over to Joey and he said, "What's going on? He's not. I can't take a picture." So he said, "Who's not letting you take a picture or something? Something like that?" And he said, "That guy." And he said, "Don't worry about it. We're taking care of that problem next week." And the following week, they found him in the trunk of a car. <laughs> I know. I remember. I remember you thought telling that story. You know. Then they made it. Actually, your father was part of 
the Daily News had a reporter in Brooklyn, but they actually made a hero out of Joey Gallo one day, where there was a they were the, the club was on President Street, and <clears throat> there was a fire next door wherever it was, and Joey Gallo helped get this kid out of the the burning apartment. Right, the next day Daily News Joey Gallo, a hero. Saves a Brooklyn youth from dying in a fire. Well, it was part of it was true, but it was a little exaggerated, you know. So you actually um, you actually took photos of the Beatles, yeah? Yeah, when they came to New York, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was quite an experience. Yeah, yeah. And what was that like? It was kind of hectic because the media mob. I mean, between the TV cameras and they were at the Plaza Hotel, right? And then back then, the security was, you know, kind of loose and stuff like that. That when we got outside the hotel, that the fans, the, they mobbed the car and they we got caught between, you know, in the middle of this whole thing where you think, you know, you're lugging around a heavy camera. The fans, not rioters or protesters, but they get a little over anxious and they start pushing you away and stuff like that. But it finally quieted down. But that was a quite an experience, you know. And you you were at Woodstock too, right? Yeah, that was yeah, yeah, that was that, that was probably when people ask me, you know, what's one of the most exciting you, things you did when you worked at, I said Woodstock just sticks out in my mind. Really? Wow. Because of the way I was sent up there with a reporter on the Wednesday before Woodstock. And we were only sent up there because this was something unique happening in New York as a music festival. No one ever expected it to turn out the way it did. And we checked into the, uh, the motel that was right on the route up to the farm. And we get up the next, was it Friday morning? Or to whatever, one in the morning. Then we walk out, and we had planned that we were going to drive up to the farm because we had, you know, drove up with the with the car. The, the roadway was with stalled autos, just bumper to bumper. You know, we ended up walking the eight miles from the motel to where the the festival was. You know, and you get wow. up there, and why? Where do all these people come from? You know. And it turned out to be what it turned out to be, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now, my brother was up there. Yeah, but and not in a nice, yeah. No, no, he was in an hotel, I don't think. No, but he actually was staying at the, and I didn't know it at the time, he was actually at the same hotel that I was staying in. Really? With, with his friend, yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. I didn't yeah, know and that. I, I didn't know that till after, you know, when all that other stuff started to develop. Yeah, so so were you there, were you there for the whole thing? Yeah, we were there. I was there till uh, actually. I left Monday morning after everybody moved out. You know, with the rain and everything. Yeah, and that that was must have been horrible with the rain. And when we went up there, when the rain stopped that morning, it was unbelievable to see the way they were sitting in mud. It was like watching if you walked into a hog farm, <laughs> and they, you know the way they keep the hogs in the mud and everything. <laughs> it's exactly you know, but. To the credit of the people who were there, I don't remember ever seeing any fights, riots, or anything like that. You know, so the peace thing probably was true, and you know, and that, that wasn't my style of living. I was not into the hippie world. I wasn't even into their music. I mean, who heard of, ever heard of Jimi Hendrix or Joan Baez until I got up to Woodstock? You know. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell you some of the stories we did to get into place. You know, you grab a doctor's coat, and you dress like a doctor with a stethoscope around your neck, you know, and you're in the fifth floor of Montefiore Hospital taking a picture of somebody who they snuck in, you know. But those stories we can't tell. Otherwise, I don't know if there's a statute of limitation on. I, th I think you're probably safe now. <laughs> I think so. I would hope so. Most of listen, most of those people or anybody are probably all dead anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember my father telling me one time he had a he he, he I think it was one of these mafia guys that got rubbed out 
and um, he was he was on the street. But for whatever reason, they, they got there too late, or he was already in the morgue or something. And my father said he went to the morgue and told the guy, can you just put him on the floor? So I could, the guy said, I can't. And he said, come on, you could just do it for a minute. Oh, yeah, I don't remember. Put him on the floor like, and took yeah, the picture. Yeah, picture that. They, uh, it was a similar story that some guy, uh, I don't know if it was a gangster or not, but he got shot. It was a, a homicide in Brooklyn. And the body was behind the the L, the pillar of one of the elevated subways that mm -hmm. ran that time, right? And you couldn't see the guy, all of his body. I won't mention a photographer's name, but the photographer said to the sergeant or whoever it was, says, listen, we can't get a clear view. Can you move the guy a little bit? So they just dragged him over 10 feet. You know, and that was it. I wanted to ask you if, um, and I guess your, your mom was too young, but Nanny's father died, um, I guess about seven or eight years after they came here or something like that. I think it was maybe maybe even a little bit more than that. Um, but again, they never really talked about. No, uh, you mentioned something now that I don't remember happening. Nanny's grand, Nanny's father died. Uh, well, yeah, you would have been you would have been young, but it was it was in that that paper, and he, you know he um, he remarried. Nanny's father. Nanny's father remarried because her mother died very young. Her mother was only 42 when she passed away. Uh, and he remarried um, either just before or just after uh, she came to America. But there was, there's a photo that Lois, Lois's daughter had, Stephanie had, that shows him with a woman standing next to him, which I assume is his second wife. And I was contacted by a guy from, from, from Italy who told me that his great grandmother was the daughter of nanny's father and the second wife but i have no way i haven't been able to prove it all those pictures that lois the daughter is sending you must have been photographs that uncle achilles had yeah because yeah. It, it, i never saw any of those pictures as far as you know nanny and grandpa having anything yeah no he he apparently um, he had them. Um, oh, I know what I wanted to ask you about. I wanted to ask you earlier too, and I forgot. So tell me about Port Washington, because I only remember being very, very young and going out to Port Washington. So how did they wind up with that house in Port Washington? 51. But how could you have gone to Port Washington? They sold the place in 40? Well, it must have been, well, it must have been friends of my parents out there. So maybe I didn't go to where they live, but I remember going to Port Washington with my mom and dad. Do you remember the house or the road it was on? No, I just remember. I just remember the name of the people. Uh, the last name was Piano. I'm trying to think of who they had out there. It might have been there was a family in Corona that lived around the corner from us, and their name was Piano. And my sister went to grammar school with the daughter, so it might have been a friend of your father as a teenager when he was a teenager, and they went and ended up out there. So how many years did they have that for? They, I think we went out there in, right after, no, before World War II ended in 45. And we were probably from 42 to 48, you know. Yeah, of course, yeah, we, yeah World War II when it ended, well, VE Day was in the spring, but I remember being in Port Washington on VJ Day mm -hmm. because we all went up into town to celebrate. There was a, you know, everybody running around in their cars and everything. Right, but they right. sold it in '48, and that's when we moved to Whitestone. When you when you moved to Whitestone, was was Aunt Mary already there, or she came after? Yeah, no, she was already there. That's why we ended up in Whitestone. Aunt Mary, I think your father was there before Aunt Mary. And then Aunt Mary went there, and then we we ended up there. Yeah, because my, when my parents got married, that's where they lived. Johnny was born in White. I was born in Whitestone, actually, too. Yeah, you were on 150th Street. 
where your parents had the apartment. Because I used to babysit you and your brother on 150th Street. Then they wow. moved to 24th Avenue, where you would, uh, your mom had, uh, I think, one of her sisters or brothers or something. Yeah, Uncle Dominic lived with them. Yeah, we, we moved to College Point. I think I was three or four when we moved to College Point. Uh, something like that. And then, yeah, and then I used to go, I used to spend a week in in Whitestone with with your mom and dad. That was my vacation in the summertime. I went and, I went and got spoiled in Whitestone. Play with the trains. But yeah, right. But your sister was born in College Point, though. She was born in College Point, yeah. She was born in 58, so... Well, this has been a lot of fun, Paul. I especially uh, like that story about my my mom and dad. Uh, well, uh, not yeah, that was. <laughs> but your mother and father, I loved the both of them. They were really, especially your father. Like I said, you know, he was like, you know, somebody that affected my life and helped me through life. Well. You know, my my father, even, you know, my mother's family, my father was, the guy, everybody called my father. When something happened, when something bad happened, they called my father. And he would drop everything and go do whatever he had to do to straighten it out. You know, so. All right, well, thanks, Paul.